Andy here, and today I wanted to talk about Mr. Harrigan's phone. I wanted to compare the book to the movie, so I'm going to have to talk a little bit about specifics, so I will be giving away some plot points and stuff, and we'll be talking about the overall theme and things like that, so if you don't want the movie or the book ruined for you, then maybe skip this video, but if you've seen it or you don't care, then let's get started. Let me actually grab the book really quick. So Mr. Harrigan's Phone is actually the first short story in If It Bleeds by Stephen King, and it is a movie that just came out 10, 12-ish days ago. Let's compare the two. They are quite similar, but there are some differences here and there. So first, let's just talk about what each of them are about. The overall plot is the same for both of them. It's about a young boy named Craig. He starts working for a rich man named Mr. Harrigan who has recently moved to the town. He hires Craig to read to him two or three times a week and he ends up working for Mr. Harrigan for a few years. While he's working there, he ends up buying Mr. Harrigan a phone. First, Mr. Harrigan refuses, but then he takes it and it becomes a part of him, much like our own phones are. They continue on with their relationship. Mr. Harrigan ends up passing away, and it seems like Craig is able to still contact him even after he has been buried. So that's the basic plot for both of them. So the similarities are, you know, the plot, a lot of the characters are similar. Mr. Harrigan is a very frugal billionaire and he's also kind of an interesting contradictory character in himself because he lives in this huge beautiful mansion but like I said he's frugal so he doesn't spend a lot of money but he also like quotes Thoreau who's a transcendentalist and you know wants to just live off the land and and you know not have material things and Mr. Harrigan has really like climbed the ladder of success by pushing others down so he is a very interesting character himself. The story is told through Craig's perspective as a young adult looking back on kind of his childhood and adolescence before and after Mr. Harrigan passed away. But I will say that the book does read like it is broken up into two separate parts. The first is more of just like a slice of life kind of story. We just hear about Mr. Harrigan's life and Craig's life and what they do together and things like that. And then after Mr. Harrigan passes away, the book does become a lot creepier and there were parts that kind of freak you out and you're like, oh, this is, this is getting creepy. But I think that also may have been there to show, I don't know, maybe as a metaphor for how Craig felt before and after losing Mr. Harrigan. The two did really bond and have a very close relationship, and so I think it's kind of interesting to read it in that manner as well. Uh, the movie was not like that, and we'll get to the movie in a second. They do read a lot of books together, and the books are mentioned in both the short story and the movie. However, it was obviously hard to understand why the books were being referenced in the short story. I knew it was, I knew there was a reason why, and I knew it was important for Stephen King to talk about the specific books they read. I looked them up and most of them were in like the 1800s, early 1900s, and a lot of them were stories about, I don't know, industrialization or some sort of work or even like socioeconomic status and things like that. So when I was reading the short story, I just honestly thought that it was there to highlight the different worlds between Craig and Mr. Harrigan. The books that he reads are very old, very like old world, and you know, obviously they live very different lifestyles. And then the books that Craig reads are more like thriller for fun kind of stories. But it was interesting to get a little bit more insight because you get did get to hear direct quotes that were taking for, taken from the book and conversations around each of the books. And so you got, I think, a little bit more insight in the film than you did in the book as to why each one of these was selected. There is also some interesting things that happen after Mr. Harrigan passes away where Craig really is curious how Mr. Harrigan would have handled, for example, a situation with a bully. There are text messages from Mr. Harrigan, uh, from the dead, ooh, from beyond the grave. They're explained away as being glitches in an iPhone or ghosts in a machine. And actually, if you want to look at Stephen King's Twitter, he deciphers these codes for you and lets you know uh, what these codes from beyond the grave actually mean. So that's kind of fun. Um, I did say I have a line that I liked. So let me read you that and then we'll get more into the movie in a second. This is later on in the story where Craig realizes that he got the journalism bug and he's really into journalism. So he says that he's like fall in love with it and he doesn't think that it'll ever leave him. And he says, I believe you hear a click, not in your head, but in your soul when you find a place where you belong. You can ignore it, but really, why would you? 
just love that line. So I wanted to include it here. So let's focus a little bit more on the movie now. So the movie does run quite parallel with the book. The movie starts where the book ends and then kind of wraps back around, which I thought was a really neat idea. And there are, I mean, so many direct quotes taken from the short story, which I think is fantastic. I love when films do that. You get to really see the story come to life when that happens. Information about the town, dialogue, the books they read, some Bible verses. There's just so much taken directly from the short story. But then there was some stuff that was expanded upon as well, which I thought was fantastic. One difference I would say is that Mr. Harrigan is talked about in the book as being kind of like that ruthless businessman, but it's not exactly focused upon. There are some things in the movie where we get to learn more about how ruthless of a businessman he was. For example, Craig Googles him and he finds that there are like people who have committed suicides from his corporations. Like he has actively destroyed a lot of people's lives. And although we do get that, you know, like ruthless businessman in the book, I don't think it's as harsh as it is in the film. So I thought that that, that was an interesting um, add in as well. I also love Mr. Harrigan too, because he is just like a no nonsense type of guy. He honestly reminds me of my husband, like it's a little scary, but um, for example, on his answering machine, he's just like, he doesn't say, oh, I'll call you back when I get the message. He's just like, I'll contact you back if I see fit or something like that. He's just so direct and to the point with everything and no nonsense. Yeah, he, he really is a, a fascinating character to just kind of like sit and analyze in himself. Then there are some differences with the characters. They usually have the same name and things like that, but some of the characters are just a little bit different in the film. Not that it really adds or takes away from anything, but that is a difference that's in there. The movie really did have great way of combining aspects of the book that maybe weren't stated or were a bit different. For example, Craig really wants a phone in both of them. In the book, he's just like, I want a phone. It's cool. It's a cool new gadget. I really want one. But in the movie, it's a lot more of one, a way to fit in. So all the kids in the cafeteria, all the cool kids are just on their phones. They're not even talking to each other. They're not even looking at each other. They're just on their phones. And so that's like your, your ticket in to the cool table is just getting a phone and not talking to anyone. Also, he has a bully at school as well. And so he asks his father, well, I need a phone. What if I need a call for help? The film just did a really good way of combining different aspects of the book and just bringing it more full circle, I think. Now, there are some fantastic quotes in here that are from the movie that I think further explain the book. And so I just want to read a few of them to you. These are quotes from Mr. Harrigan. So I guess my question reading the book was like, well, why does Mr. Harrigan answer these text messages from Craig when he's reaching out for help after Mr. Harrigan has passed away? And this line here, Mr. Harrigan says, when someone is laid to rest, they shouldn't worry about things above ground. He also says that after you pass away, you never feel pain or guilt. And he says that when asked why he lives in this town, in this, you know, big, beautiful mansion, but in this like very small town, he says, no one asks things of me because when they do, I almost invariantly answer. And he also says, dispatch them with haste, your enemies. So I think this is a lot of like foreshadowing and explanation of things that will take place later on in the movie because when Craig ends up calling and leaving messages for Mr. Harrigan about bullies or things that happen or injustices that he feels aren't correct, Mr. Harrigan seems to step in and make things a little bit more right, at least in the eyes of Craig. I just think these lines are perfect for just further explaining the plot a little bit more and how that connection exists. But another difference is that I think the book actually explained better how that connection exists in like a literal sense because in the movie, and maybe this is just because I read the book before I saw the movie, so I felt like I would have been confused and maybe I wouldn't have, but I do think that it's worth stating because the book does split, explain it a little bit better. But it's the phone that Craig has when he's younger that he's able to contact Mr. Harrigan with. It goes to his voicemail, he can leave a message and get text messages from that phone. Once he gets a new phone, an upgraded phone, and he tries to call that number, it is disconnected because it's not, it's no longer in use. So I think the book did a little bit better at explaining that, and that was a difference that I preferred um, in the book. I also think that that is, is important too, because 
it's the connection, the actual connection, the, the phone that they have at the same time that they use to contact each other when Mr. Harrigan's alive that connects them. So I think that's just poetic in itself. Mr. Harrigan does fall in love with his phone, phone once Craig gives it to him because although he is a retired older gentleman, he still has a hand in business. And so basically Craig convinces him to take the phone because you can see stock, stocks in real time and he's able to kind of like change his portfolio to, to fit what he sees happening in the market. But just like Craig, the phone becomes an addiction. Mr. Harrigan ends up taking pictures of mushrooms with it. He ends up using it to watch videos. He ends up setting alarms on it and writing notes on it. And it's become like an extended part of him, much in the same way that our phones are a part of us. So now let's kind of get to the themes of the story because there is one I think overarching thing but I think there's a few different kind of threads that you can pull at here. I would say one is definitely advancements in technology and like how quickly things have changed. I think this is highlighted through the differences between Craig and Mr. Harrigan. This is a quote where he says uh, it's Mr. Harrigan he's talking about the internet and he's saying free samples are fine but if we give people too much for free whether it's clothing or food or information they come to expect it. And he's talking about the internet. He says, it's like a broken water main, one spewing information instead of water. So it's just interesting how much he understands the dangers of this, but is still becoming addicted to his phone, just like Craig is. And I also did just find two fantastic quotes. These are from critics rating the movie on Rotten Tomatoes. And the first one says, it's about a well-mannered kid learning how anything that comes too easily likely has dark strings attached. And so I think that this is kind of like the overarching theme. And then the second quote here is, resist the urge to delve deeply into the mechanics of using modern technology to speak to ghosts. Instead, it's a rather depressing allegory for our innate refusal to give up things that are convenient but bad for us. So I think those two kind of explain the meaning of the story just perfectly. There are obviously scenes that show addiction to cell phones. For example, in the movie, we see the kids communicating through text. I mean, they're standing right next to each other at lockers and they don't even talk. They're just talking through text message. But I think it's more than just that. And I think that's highlighted through what Craig asks of Mr. Harrigan after he has already passed away to, in his way, make things right. So basically what he does is justify his actions of contacting Mr. Harrigan and leaving that voicemail because it's easy and it's harmless. All he's doing is leaving a voicemail, even if that does end up to harm done to other people, in his mind, that's what he thinks, at least at first. It really does boil down to, it seems so easy and harmless, but there is a darker side there. And I think that's also highlighted here where Mr. Harrigan says, I wasted an hour of beautiful summer daylight this morning watching George Jones videos. So yes, it was something that he enjoyed doing. He enjoyed the videos, but he also wasted living in the present day. This movie and this book, I think have great themes behind them. I think that there's a great message in there and I really do enjoy both of them. There's also this comment here where Craig asks why Mr. Harrigan won't get a laptop. Obviously these conversations are before he passed away. I hope that I made that clear. So he says, oh, you know, why don't you get a laptop? And Mr. Harrigan replies, get thee behind me, Satan. It's like you taught me to smoke marijuana and enjoy it. And now you're saying, if you like pot, you'll really like heroin. I think not Craig. <laughs> it's also interesting to analyze the different ways that Craig and Mr. Harrigan use their phones. Mr. Harrigan obviously does become addicted to it in the same way that Craig does, but also in a different manner. So he's still having Craig over to read to him. He's still like, you know what I mean? Like otherwise living a semi-normal life. Craig has kind of replaced his human interactions at school with this device. And so that's also an interesting to th thing to analyze as well. And maybe that's also where the books come into play too and how differently they were raised because although Mr. Harrigan is addicted to his phone, he wasn't raised on it the way that Craig was. And so in that sense, Craig does have a different experience and relationship with his phone. All in all, I really liked both of them. However, I will say that I think that where the book 
has creepy moments, the film does not. It's well filmed, I loved how they did it. It's a drama, like it's not a horror movie. And I think they could have leaned into the creepy aspects of the book more because I remember reading the book for the first time and actually being creeped out. And all of the creepy moments that could have been intensified they kind of just cut over. I think that the movie did a good job in bringing everything full circle, adding a little bit more, tying up those loose ends that maybe the book didn't overtly explain. So they are both good and I really love the themes behind them. I just think that this is such a fun story and movie to analyze and really sit back and consider your own addiction with your phone or the things that we do that are so easy and enjoyable so we almost justify you know wasting our time or procrastinating with them instead of doing the things that we want to do so it really did make me think a lot so all in all i liked them both i did enjoy the book more i would say just because i think that it has a little bit more atmosphere and creepy elements in it i would say that the movie is more of a drama and if you want to just like sit back and enjoy something that's a little bit more of a slow burn then yeah definitely give it a watch definitely give, give this book a read let me know if you guys have checked out one or the other and if you were interested in them thank you so much for watching and i will see you soon with another horror video bye guys